Welcome everybody. This is the energy update for energetically sensitive and empaths. My name is Yona Brindis, airing from Transcodes back in Colorado. It is not quite warm enough for me to sit underneath the trees here in my tent, but uh, I'm glad uh, I'm back home. I hope you guys uh, are having uh, a somewhat manageable experience right now. Collective energies here for uh, this last week were quite challenging for most energetically sensitives and empaths and uh, without sounding too pessimistic uh, you know the the energy barometer for this week is uh, uh, showing a slight sort of de-escalation here of this intensity but um, we're still in the middle of it so a lot of you and if you hear this for the first time then please know that you're not alone with this a lot of you guys have had very, very strange experiences those last, um, yeah, four or five days. <clears throat> very strong sort of vibratory experiences, tingling or even shaking maybe. Um, most energetically sensitives experience this around the legs or the chest area. We've had um, people with a lot of um, intense experiences such as accidents, such as um, even emergency uh, room visits or um, uh, sudden um, things that happen to them, sort of a, an, a, a series of unfortunate events, all right? I hope that you guys um, <clears throat> navigated through this time, uh, and if you were a part here of this Transcause community, then you would have uh, probably found a few more people that are having these uh, same strange experiences. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. Uh, this wave is almost over, latest, latest, by uh, the beginning of next week. It should be better. Yes, and while people are still logging on here, let me welcome you, everyone. Thank you for spending your time here with me. Please let me know what country you're from. And also, please ask questions. This is a live stream, so um, you have the opportunity to ask directly. I will try to cover um, the things that came forward here for most empaths in this last week, and we're looking at the forecast for next week. <clears throat> Hello, Canada. Yes. I know people are happy to see that the barometer is going up a bit. But remember, this is not an indicator for good or bad energies. This is an indicator for intensity. Okay, so we've had two weeks of maximum intensity, electricity, power, inward, outward, from the outside, from the inside, somehow trying to regulate uh, itself and I've uh, shared this here in the forecast for April. If you have not watched this video, please uh, go to the April forecast. Um, the energetic stress was uh, extremely high and so a lot of people um, went into uh, fear, anxiety, um, but also the frustration and the anger about um, things not moving forward, the, the the stagnation that is felt. So I've been warning you guys about this for the last three weeks because um, this is really the height of, of wanting to break free from this old blocking energy, okay? So this is the correctional phase that we are in all together. And you've got to uh, understand that if you continue doing things the way you have been doing them, then you will most likely get the same results. Now, the the anxiety attacks, and that's something I would like to cover today here in particular, have a lot to do with your mental activity. And for most of us energetically sensitives, really the the lack of training, the lack of, of, of knowledge about how all this works. Uh, we, we, we all starting to realize that we are sort of an, an energetic being that is having a bodily experience as opposed to the, the old paradigm thinking that we are like a, a body that has a spiritual experience. I would strongly uh, disagree with this. What we are experiencing here as humans in this collective awakening process where we begin to feel energies and we begin to become more familiar with 
uh, some of these these um, energetic ups and downs, all right, which is ultimately the reason for this this energy update, you know, to give you guys a heads up and to get, get some feedback as well. I know a lot of people watch this video actually after the week has happened, so they don't set themselves up. I agree with that, but <clears throat> there's also the section here with the tips and how to counteract things, and that's why um, I do this uh, looking into a week, because uh, when you better know how to deal with things, uh, then uh, this 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 mental churning, this this worrying and, and um, excessive thinking about what is going on may um, or can be reduced that way. So I think it's a good idea to to look at what's ahead of you without um, getting attached to it, without setting yourself up, but with seeing seeing this as as uh, like a weather forecast where there's always variations, of course, and there's always the, the potentiality that you can. Um, adjust to it and not even experience it as a negative thing. Yes. Hi, Pennsylvania. Awesome for you guys to, to, to pop in here. Most people watch these videos as the, 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 the edited version later on, but I love having you guys here live because I, I really, really like the interaction with you. Everyone who works here with me and uh, the other fantastic trans coaches here at Transcodes knows this. So please go into into chat with me here if you would like to know more or if you have questions, even if they're not related to what I'm talking about. So let's come back to the anxiety. So what is anxiety? Okay, obviously there is a physical reaction that comes with anxiety and most of you have experienced some sort of that, or maybe not in labeled as anxiety, but it, it comes forward as like, say, heart palpitations, you know, your heart rate increases, your, your hands become sweaty, maybe you have a sort of a cringing feeling in your stomach, you get um, very nervous, this is your autonomous nervous system that's responding, and that's why last week's energy tip was to tune into your parasympathetic system, you know, that can counteract this, these nervous reactions, these nervous physical reactions. So, so you have all these reactions and you don't even know why. And then your emotions get all stressed out because now you're thinking something is wrong with you. And then, of course, your mind begins to, to, to think about what this could mean. And maybe I'm sick or maybe you know, I'm having a stroke or maybe I'm having a heart attack. And uh, and this is what creates sort of an increase and in escalation in that um, uh, uh, energetic sensation that you have, where uh, if you knew that this is part of the energetic wave that is coming in right now, and what it does is it creates a little bit of energetic stress that doesn't necessarily lead to a physical, like a, a, a medical condition, but it's something that requires grounding. So um, last week, the the uh, the task was really to to learn or to know how to calm you down and to ground your energy and to not fall into this trap of thinking too much. All right, because the thinkingness, which um, uh, happens. Uh, without your volition. So there's no way you can turn off your mind. But what you can do is you can learn how signal processing works within your body and then know when to catch it, when to interrupt it. So it, it, it with the with energetic sensations, the way this goes is this, that they usually come in physically first through your autonomous nervous system, okay? And they're they're showing you certain areas of your body where there is a is a is some kind of, of reaction to something, okay? And knowing um, what energy centers are located there, knowing how to clear your energies, what exits you have at these places can actually help you to release those energies right away. Um, uh, that's, uh, of course, part of, of energy training, but um, what has to happen next is to calm down your emotional reaction because the emotions are the ones that are tied to your autonomous nervous system, to your body, um, through your neurotransmitters. So they are now creating a reaction to what you are experiencing, what you are sensing. And then the mind responds right afterwards, and it's exactly in this order. And all this happens within a few fractions of a second, but the mind then um, reacts as well. So it is not really the energetic sensation that we have per se that uh, is in the foreground uh, when we go into anxiety. It is our mental interpretation and the 
the uh, emotional reaction to what we're experiencing. And yay, hello to South Africa. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you guys all here at this time of the day. I know it's like in the middle of the night or very early in the morning for some of you. So regardless, I just love seeing you guys here. Thank you for coming. So it's not the sensation itself. It is the reaction to it. But that is um, what we need to learn as energetically sensitives, um, how these things relate. And there is a physical, there's an emotional, there's a mental, there's a, a, a <clears throat> spiritual, behavioral, uh, and of course, an etheric um, a level or layer to these reactions. And so even if you've never heard anything about energy healing, um, just the, the knowledge about your energy centers, and this doesn't have to be like all woo woo, you know. There's a, there's a, a very cool literature, very cool training courses, and this is what we do here at Transcoast primarily, helping people to understand their energy system a little better. You don't need to want to become an energy healer to to um, a benefit from this knowledge, you know, and and beginning to feel things within yourself and, and knowing sort of what you can do according to these um, reactions that you feel. So the whole point uh, looking back uh, to last week is that it was extremely stressful uh, on many, many different levels. And um, we now need to um, kind of work with, you know, sort of getting rid of all this residue that has uh, built up here. And I've uh, recommended to do a detox, uh, a house cleaning uh, in the the, the physical, uh, which uh, here at Transcodes we're currently doing. We started this morning a, a three-day um, reboot detox light fast with um, you know juices um, and uh, soups uh, just to get our system sort of uh, speed up a little bit. And also, and this is, uh, is uh, some of this uh, spiritual metaphysical component uh, to increase the capacity for us to hold these higher frequencies that are indeed now coming in for this entire planet. So um, the problem with, with the, 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 the contextualization of these um, metaphysical events and metaphysical only because they are not entirely proven through science, at least not through uh, some uh, parts of science. There are some uh, scientists that are, are very much aware of it and that make a case for it, but it's not fully mainstream accepted yet. So we live or have lived with this for the last uh, 20 years and so be it. But the point uh, of these uh, correctional energies is really to mm, help us uh, to gradually increase the capacity for, you know, these these higher vibrational states that we are as a collective moving towards to, all right? And that means that the container here that we have, you know, I, I, the, the capacity for light, you know, that this needs to be enlarged. And, and that requires a person to actually educate themselves about the energy body, all right? So that you know how to... Uh, expand that you know how to remove blockages uh, as you um, uh, detect them or have a, a professional uh, remove them but that you that you are actually able to hold all that if you can't hold this and this is what happened here last week which most of us can't yet uh, we have these like really strong uh, sort of buzzing type of uh, uh, feelings and that creates a lot of emotional and, and mental reaction uh, which then leads to these um, uh, you know extreme uh, sort of situations and also accidents and stuff like that because you know we, we feel kind of out of sorts okay we, we're overextended. London <laughs> good to see you guys once more so yeah so we're exhausted now and drained and this needs to be healed a little bit and the best way to approach this is through um, clearing out some uh, some of that uh, sort of stress uh, uh, related uh, residue in you and the best way to do this really is as most of you know is to calm down to learn how to meditate um, to eat better food uh, especially here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's springtime. It's important that you now adjust to this uh, sort of new life in nature um, and, and that you, you know, embrace that. So last week I said, you know, water, good nutrients 
and sunlight and of course the air to breathe. Those are all things that are available to all of us and they don't require a, a special budget. All right, so um, uh, take my word here that the, the better you diet, the better your um, sort of mindfulness practice with your physical and also with your mind, you know, the meditation and, uh, you know, stretching and so forth, um, you know, physical exercise, all in, in, in a balanced way, uh, the easier it is for you to to really expand into energies. And from a manifestation standpoint, um, you know, you, if, you, if your container is too small, you cannot really hold these places that you want to be in, you know, in abundance, in a true love, in, in you know, having a, a wonderful environment uh, that helps you to expand, that helps you to be inspired and creative. But if your energy is too contracted, then you will not be able to manifest that just due to these energetic restrictions that you have. And so the, most of these, these thoughts that we had, this, this turning and the anxiety um, last week, I, I lovingly called them brain farts, okay? They were based on, and, and don't get, I don't mean this in a, in a uh, you know, degrading way, they, they were based on what ifs and, and uh, all these uh, sort of uh, purely mental and critical negative inner voices, all right? And I wanted to share with you that critical inner voice is a standing term here at Transcodes. We have a specific uh, modality for, for dealing, you know, for helping you or coaching you through um, dealing with your critical inner voice because it's such a common phenomenon, okay? And the critical inner voice has to do with your growing up it has a lot to do with what you were exposed to when you were a child what um, the people around you say not necessarily uh, directly to you also about others and so a lot of us when we run into these um mental self-imposed restrictions all right come from our childhood and that's why um we are doing the inner child integration here on friday night this week for those of you who would like to work with this actively because um you know when your critical inner voice represents all these voices that that, that conditioned you that programmed you and uh, there are these restricting beliefs that we have they are um tied to this um uh, inner child and and sometimes actually multiple inner children that um uh, feel restricted or, or in worst case scenario, sort of locked up in the basement. They, 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 when we have multiple inner children, these represent um, specific uh, restrictions at specific times of you growing up. So you can have, like, say, an infant inner child that uh, got abandoned or, or not uh, sufficiently nourished um, in the first year of development. You can have a, a three-, four-year-old, you know, that... Um, that was told to uh, shut up, that was told to not express herself fully or um, uh, that w was uh, locked up or wasn't allowed to explore the world. And then you can have a 12-year-old a inner child, you know, that was... Uh, um, maybe overprotected or controlled too much from the outside. And all of these um, events, uh, not to say that it's our parents or caretakers who um, caused this, but they all uh, carry a part of that, um, uh, um, say, restriction that we have in us. And so when we want to heal this, we need to go back uh, to this part of us and, and help it to liberate it. We have to help our inner child to come back into the light and to become a part of us again. And in that way, that's an energetic uh, uh, way to, to um, heal uh, deeper aspects of ourselves. Um, and that way we help ourselves to uh, increase the capacity for um, you know, our light body, our energy body, or what you want to say it, for higher vibrational states, all right? Hello, New York. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Thank you guys for coming once more. So, 
Yeah, so the critical inner voice and the inner child are related. And um, the liberation process that is going on, which is what the, all this uh, correction is about, um, has a lot to do with us, you know, especially us energetically sensitives and empaths, to find the way back to our true inner voice, to our true inner feeling. Too many of us, and this is uh, sort of uh, very, very typical of this uh, first and second wave of um, uh, uh, spiritual awakenings, um, uh, you know, like uh, starting, for most of us, it started in the mid-80s. All right, uh, and then um, uh, and there was a second wave, you know, that came in <clears throat> towards the the end of, uh, of the nineties, and then another one uh, coming in two thousand twelve. So, uh, you know, the, the, those of us who've been around for a long time in our childhood, you know, talking about our sensations, our visions, our um, gut feelings was uh, very poo pooed. It was very. Um, actually, many of us actually even got punished for that. And so a big part of that, that healing path that we are on is to, to, to open this part of our perceptivity back up and to feel confident and to learn how to trust in this part of ourself. And so um, this next week here will have a lot to do with you training that, training to hear your true inner voice. So your critical inner voice is that part, is these, this overlay of all these voices of things that you've heard in the past, you know, and things that you've beaten yourself up with, like with, I should have, and why didn't I do that? Oh, oh my God, I can't believe I just did this. Oh my God, this is killing me, blah, 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 blah. Or, um, you know, you're ruined, you are uh, a loser and stuff like that. So that's the the, the, the negative inner voice. And, and, the main characteristic of that voice is that it's really loud. So the true inner voice is not that loud. It's it's always there as well. And you guys know this. I know you know this because I talk to you guys all day long. And all we really need to learn and train is how to turn down the volume of that critical negative inner voice and turn up the volume of our true inner voice, which is kind of like an automatic process. So we need to learn how to trust in our gut feeling, if you will, but um, I mean this, of course, for 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 you guys, uh, empaths and energetically sensitives, it's more than that. It's actually inner guidance. You will get very distinct messages, very distinct visuals, and very distinct um, guidance as to what you should do. But the problem with the the inner discernment is that the critical inner voice is too loud, and so um, most of you are still a bit confused as to what is my true self speaking and what is my my um, sort of wounded self speaking, all right. But the good news about all that is, is that this is all now coming to an end here in 2018. So the overall process is to liberate ourselves from these things and really to step up, to come out of the woodwork, as I called it a few years back. You know, this is, uh, the, you know, 2019 will be a lot easier for all of us. But already here in the summertime, many of you guys will start having enough of the same old, same old and suppressing your stuff and living in this uh, restricted way where you can't fully express yourself. So that's why there's so many people coming forward now that want to learn how to become an energy healer, you know, that begin to listen to this inner calling. And you know this, we've been training energy healers or, or people who want to become energy healers from all over the world for years. And um, we're specialized um, on people who already work with other people or even energy healers already um, uh, to learn the deeper aspects um, here uh, with uh, the professionals at Transcult. So uh, for those of you interested in, in checking this out, there is a an energy uh, healer program for professionals, life coaches, uh, therapists, um, healing arts, any kind, or, or someone who already has contact um, to uh, clients or patients every day and who wants to learn how to integrate energy healing into your practice. This is what we're specialized on. And the next training starts May 1st, by the way. Yes. And for those of you, by the way, I just put this online surprise. Uh, we have uh, a, once a year we do trainings in person. Uh, uh, and uh, we, it's, it's highly educative, it's uh, very intense uh, for three days, and our next training is going to be around the summer solstice, uh, 20th uh, till 22nd of June, 
in Winter Park, Florida this time, USA. So if you can come, then um, perhaps you want to use this opportunity to train with Jeff and I in person. Yes, and so <clears throat> in order to get that, that this, this, these two self promptings, as we call them, uh, uh, to work for you better and not to uh, get into this place where your true self promptings turn into true self interventions, all right? And this is uh, something that some of you can maybe relate to. That's namely when you are forced to stop whatever it is that you're doing, when you are forced to st start something new or, uh, you know, um, you know, bring in change. And this is and the, the the cause for all these accidents, guys. Accidents, sudden diseases, um, especially the flare-up of chronic diseases. But, um, you know, these are all signs from your energy system that, hey, dude, something is not right, okay? And if you're not listening to me, I'm going to make you listen. I'm going to stop your car. I'm going to, you know, have you, um, this sounds harsh, but, you know, I'm going to have you strain your ankle or I'm going to, you know, like so that you stop doing what you're doing, all right? And that you take this time, this recovery time to reconcile with with uh, your, your, your true self, you know, what you truly want, what you truly need and come up with new ways. Most people just do this once a year at the beginning of the new year and that's it. And after six weeks, you know, all these good resolutions are gone. But uh, your energy body, you know, works 24-7 uh, um, all your life. And it is a, a part of your inner system that can guide you. But as long as you are listening to these critical inner voices or other people for that matter more uh, than uh, to your inner guidance, the chances are that your, your, your decisions, your choices are not really that congruent with, with where you want to be. All right. And this is uh, uh, also another aspect here for the next week, namely um, this, this breaking free from all your externalizations. Guys, I've talked about externalizing your inner higher power pretty much, I mean, you know, for as long as I am an energy healer, because this is the, the core of most of our issues, um, whether energetically sensitive or not. Uh, it is that we externalize our power to others. First, of course, we have to do this when we grow up. We have to externalize our power to our parents because our physical isn't even, you know, uh, developed enough yet to, to, to help us to survive. But then this, this, you know, continues with school and college and work and, you know, uh, false self things, like things that we think we need to have or we need to do, all right? And this is where we develop these codependencies, where we develop these, the, the conformism that slowly, slowly kills us, all right? And you know me, I, I like talking about things in this direct manner because there's really no way to sugarcoat this. So when when we feel completely frustrated, by the time we're 30, that's usually 29, 30 is the first, um, uh, statistically, is, is the, f the first occasion where people start questioning what they're doing. And then later, you know, usually when the kids go uh, move out or when, you know, uh, some uh, kind of uh, uh, relaxation happens with the, the, the financial situation around 45, and then once more when retirement hits because those are these times where we naturally go through transitions we have these 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 rites of passages in uh, rites of passage in these times and that's when um you know we need to do a house cleaning that's when we need to remove the things that <clears throat> do not serve us anymore and anyone who is caught in these dependencies you know runs into an extremely high energetic stress because you're not congruent you're doing something that you thought was the right thing or to please others or because you simply didn't know any better and your system is now starting to really get stressed out because you are not following your path, your personal path of your highest potential or, um, you know, uh, karmic task, if you will. And that's where you guys need to understand why this is so important, this kind of talk, okay? There's a lot of woo-woo stuff out there, a lot of esotericism, and, and uh, I hate to say it, but this is part of the, the, the cleaning house 
um, uh, 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 sort of uh, momentum that is coming in with a lot of bad guidance, with a lot of misguidance. So if you're asking me, I've been around uh, in the, 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 the spiritual world here for over 30 years. If you're asking me, 95% of these gurus out there or these people that say, you can only get there through me, okay, are... Um, do not have your 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 best interest in mind. Yes, Ireland. <laughs> oh, so cool you guys here all. Today must be a good day. There's so many people coming today. Wonderful. Thank you. Um so there is a lot of false guidance out there and 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 I you know there's always of course people who want to make a business or you know I make a living from this but um this different when uh, you know you you have uh, people who actually have the agenda of making you dependent on them so um for your discernment um tool any teaching or any teacher or any guide who tells you that the only way to get there is through you through them sorry and they have the only secret okay this should raise your um your true inner voice to say wait a minute this can't be how can you be the authority for me nobody can be the authority for um what your true self you know really wants uh, you to do or you know like uh, you know who you truly are um I, that, therefore i i strongly recommend you guys that you um when you when you're in this process of trying to find a mentor or a guide or a guru or a teacher, then always, always, you know, feel this out. Does this feel true to me within, right? Always feel this out. There is your inner voice that can tell you whether or not this is true to you. Now, I do want to point out that there are different stages of our journey. There's different phases. And so there will be teachers that are really, really good for certain phases of your journey and they will bring you to a certain place and then they will not be or they won't be able to get you any farther that's when you shift that's when you you know like become interested in other teachings and so don't you know judge yourself if you feel like you've fallen for uh, uh, these kind of teachers in the past you know uh, some of us have to have had that experience in order to become able to discern this fully but then it's important you move on without beating yourself up and just seeing all that as an experience is very important uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, uh, sort of the, the the further development here with the the, the spiritual awakening um, I'm actually seeing a lot of problems here in the future with fanatism and cultish behavior again so I just watched this uh, cool a documentary about um, Bhagwan um, Osho, as uh, most of you know, who we branded after uh, there were some legal issues. And it's amazing, it's amazing, you know, how many people followed a teaching that um, uh, restricts people on all levels, all right? So I want you to really use your discernment here in the future because there's going to be a lot of like sort of self-proclaimed whatever, uh, uh, second Jesuses or uh, avatars of this or that or gurus of that or that, okay? So um, and make sure that you don't fall for this. And in your personal lives, it's the same thing, you know. It doesn't matter what personal situation you are in. If you externalizing your power to make decisions to your spouse, to your children sometimes even, um, to your parents or to, you know, whatever the, 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 the neighbors think, uh, then <clears throat> you are uh, very, or there's a very high chance that you are in a place of self-imposed restrictions. And that will cause anxiety, that will cause depression, because you cannot really expand the way you need to expand, okay? And so um, anxiety and, and depression and other states, uh, even, uh, you know, anger management issues, uh, those are very often related to the things that people cannot see that are not that obvious namely the incongruence from within and um, once more I've talked about this a lot here in the past couple of weeks and also in the 21 days um, life energy trainings um, in the videos here watch them if you haven't done so it's about your unmet needs all right so um, uh, because we cannot uh, talk about this forever here and I need to come to the forecast and the energy tips that I have for you 
I just needed to to uh, get you into that sort of uh, feeling of of what this next week is going to be about. Yes. Um, Yes, Gerald. I mean, this whole year with the fall schools, uh, but uh, it's it's uh, what's underneath that is the propensity to externalize our power. Okay, and as a spiritual awakening is becoming a bit more adaptable right now. Okay, um, there will be a lot of fall schools, but there's also uh, a lot of people who are currently already in these. Uh, false teachings and the reason why they're not recognizing that is because they're not connected with their their true selves so whenever we are uh, primarily connected with our false self which is what we think we have to be or who we want to be um, uh, our inner uh, true self discernment goes down you know all the way to zero all the way to living a life that is completely incongruent to ourselves all right and so um uh, for this uh, next week, this will come to your awareness. This will come forward a lot. The affected energy centers next week will uh, continue to be our first chakra, which means you need a lot of grounding, continued grounding, um, our fifth and sixth chakra. And sixth chakra is your third eye. As most of you know, you'll uh, be able to actually have uh, some cool visions if you get past that intensity, that physical intensity. And the fifth chakra, once more, is truth, truth that wants to come forward, truth that wants to be expressed. And the way this um, plays out in your, um, uh, you know, on your physical, emotional, mental uh, levels is um, physically, um, once more, you know, like really take good care of your food this week. Okay, I mean, do, do this forever for the rest of your life. But uh, if you know that you have not such a beneficial diet, then really make an effort this week to eat more raw fruits and vegetables, less processed foods, fast foods. I don't need to tell you that. I'm going to um, uh, post the, the link here for the high vibrational living um, uh, in, in the, 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 the commentary. Um, and make a house cleaning. I said this last week already, you know, like really clear out your closets, you know, throw away the stuff that you don't need anymore. And especially uh, if if you're a bit like me, I'm, I'm a bit inert when it comes to throwing away things, especially tools. OK, if you have like a a, a dull knife or a not functioning um uh, whatever hammer or, or a screwdriver or whatever throw them away and get a new one okay these this, these little five dollar investments can change your life because they you know help you to to reduce the energetic stress all right yes green smoothies wonderful so do a house cleaning from inside and outside all right and stay in that energy um, emotionally, you know, the, it's 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 very difficult with the the anxiety and with the depression, and and it, it can catch people at a very very vulnerable space uh, or state. And I I I know this, so I don't want to sound disrespectful, but you really have to go into um, picking yourself up where you're at. Okay, if you feel that you cannot handle anything, then um, re reduce it into baby steps. Um, you know, make a list of things that you can do. Um, focus on what can I do right now. Forget about all the things that you cannot do right now. And uh, definitely stop thinking about the things that you cannot even control. All right. So what can I do right now to make myself feel better? Even if I just go brush my teeth or take a shower or shave. All right, this will give you, this will shift your energy to a slightly higher vibratory state. And from there, you will have more energy to address um, uh, more complicated tasks. All right. And if it's not that bad for you, but if you're just feeling overwhelmed and you need to change, you know, um, maybe your job or your business or whatever, then break it down. You know, this is what I meant with plan making. Uh, last week, you know, write it down and, and say, okay, this is what I would like to resolve. Um, and this is what is bugging me. Start with what doesn't go for you no more, the no goes, all right, and formulate this for yourself, write it down, formulate it for yourself, and start there. Mentally, you can use your mind really for this uh, for this process really well, namely by um, you know going in and uh, and and, and uh, writing down your critical inner voice as well. You know, write that down. What are the things that you hear in your mind? Why you shouldn't do this? Okay, why you shouldn't look for a new job or why you shouldn't um, uh, end this relationship or whatever? Why you shouldn't move? You know, start facing 
those fears. Start facing um, uh, the, your concerns. Um, don't shove them away. The, sh the shoving away and trying to uh, um, sort of detach or dissociate from them is what uh, creates all this... Uh, um, uh, uh, addictive pattern in you, you know, and this is why a lot of people, you know, go back to their old patterns when they feel energetic stress. So, um, you know, you don't have to have the fixes, you don't need to have the resolutions, but use your mind to wiggle your way through this and ask yourself questions. Okay, what could I do, you know, or what could I do better? Or, I know when you feel like you're stuck, you know, use your mind to reframe it. Say, okay, I'm not stuck. I'm just in a place of, you know, healthy growth last week, you know, where things are starting to shift, where things are starting to, to grow. I'm seeding out new seeds, all right? So use your mind as a tool, but don't let your mind run the show, all right? Uh, in energies, um, <clears throat> it's really... Uh, uh, you know, uh, a continuation of what uh, has been happening the last two, three weeks. So there's still uh, the, the possibility of conflicts. But um, my tip for you for next week, guys, make your own decisions. Don't wait for your partner to say yes or to agree or to love it. You know, um, just do it. If you feel that you need to do this, follow this. All right. And then, um, you know, because that's another aspect of this co correctional wave is to then ask for support. You know, hey, I'm doing this and I need your support or are you willing to support me? And vice versa, if you are in the opposite position, then ask your partner, is there anything I can do to support you instead of trying to control, instead of trying to manipulate or instead of uh, becoming infringing? You know, just ask, is there anything I can help you with? Is there anything I can help you with right now? And do only that instead of running around like a chicken with a head cut off on the fire put her out. Because this is what this energetic stress will do to you next week. Spiritually, um, you know, it's about self-love and self-care and learning how to trust in yourself. And I'm explaining that in the uh, forecast for April. Um, you know, it's it's really important that you, you begin to to. To understand that your true self is not some like sort of mystical, etheric being outside of you. You know, this is it's always in you, okay? It's that eternal, unchanging part of you, all right? And all you really need to do, um, you know, is, like I said earlier, turn down the volume of all the overlay, all right? And, and, and begin to communicate with your true self. This is what I would strongly recommend to you that you go into dialogue with yourself but not that mental dialogue but within you know like asking yourself hmm, how do I truly feel about this how does this feel in my body what kind of emotions does that trigger and what kind of thoughts come up with this that you see yourself as this whole being you know with um, phys with a physical emotional mental and spiritual component and then etherically you know um, and energetically what you can do is um, because this is in, in the third component here that is coming in for April is this walking the talk type of thing. And, you know, instead of getting all riled up, uh, you know, um, about conditions and what you need and how long you should meditate and how to meditate and all that, um, my suggestion to you is that uh, you go into um, walking meditation, you know, uh, get some of these uh, free five minute alignments that I offer here at Transcodes. It's five minutes, it, it helps your energy to align and um, and do this while you're walking. You know, a lot of times, uh, if you believe it or not, um, uh, I have uh, uh, suggested to people uh, who uh, you know, want to learn how to meditate and don't know how to do this is to get a get a dog um, because it really helps uh, on many different levels, but especially also to integrate um, walking meditation, you know, where you just go into this contemplative state. And that's it, guys. This is about alignment. It's not about doing something in a way. That's all false self stuff, you know. It's about connecting and communicating within and um, doing walks and hikes is a really cool opportunity because you're also connecting with nature and you're usually breathing a little deeper and you get sunlight. Uh, just don't forget your water bottle. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, so um, if you don't have any more questions, guys, this concludes my energy update here for this next week, April 6th to April 12th. If you guys want to work uh, with me here at Transcult, you can always request a free council, um, but also uh, join the public sessions that we have. The Friday is time for inner child integration, and Saturday we have our free uh, energy group healing. So for anybody in energetic need, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, this is a free healing session. Please go to transcodes.com um, to sign up for that. And uh, I hope you guys uh, have a good week. Latest, Monday, Tuesday. It should be really cool. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye.